In this tutorial, we're gonna break down five simple skills you should have as a motion designer. And of course, since this is a Sunduck film tutorial, we're gonna show and use these five skills to create this composition right here inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Be sure to drop a like on this video. It helps us out tremendously. And if you're ready to level up your skills inside of After Effects, let's jump in and let's get started. All right, so the main thing to note before we jump into several of these techniques is the color palette because picking the right colors for your composition is gonna make the world of difference. So for example, we have all these simple animations here and because we have contrast within our color palette, everything stands out and it just looks awesome. So in our first technique we'll go through this tutorial is how to create a really smooth and engaging background animation to get things started. So we'll come here to layer, new, solid, and we'll select our color and we'll select a, not a pure white, but a very light gray color. And we'll call it background and click okay. Then what we'll do is go ahead and create another solid. And this time around, we'll do a very dark gray, not pure black background. And what I'm gonna do is put the white background above the black one. And I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard for position. And I'm also gonna come here to title action safe so we can see the center of our composition and bring the X position over until we're at the halfway mark of our comp. So this way we'll have this immediate contrast in our work. And we can add a keyframe for position on this background. We can move that keyframe forward to one second and move this all the way over to the left side very easily. And then we'll come here to 12 frames and we'll add a keyframe for the black background. We'll add a keyframe for that and move that keyframe forward by one second and then grab that X position and make sure that it's off on the left side of the comp like so. So now we'll have this animation. The white comes in and then the black one continues to roll on. Now the main thing here is to make sure we select all of our keyframes here. Hit F9 to make them easy ease. Go to the graph editor. Then what we wanna do is grab all these handles here move it over to the left side and then grab the right handles and move it into the middle. So let's create a very fluid type animation and it's just gonna roll once we have other graphics in here. So now that we have the background set up, we need to talk about the next important element of your work, which is most likely the typography and specifically how to lay it out correctly and choosing its color palette as well. So we'll grab the textile tool. You see the font I'm using right here. And the first thing we wanna do is type out our first main title. So it's probably gonna be a main title. You'll go ahead and type that out. And we'll come here to color and we'll select the eyedropper tool and we'll select that dark gray color so we can have that color palette matching. Now, one thing I wanna do is obviously make our main title thick here and we'll make sure that we use a very bold font. So black is gonna be the thickest font that we have here. And that's really gonna make the title stand out. We'll come here to tracking and we'll set this to negative 40 and this will make our letters seem closer together and more bunched up. And then what we can do is take this layer, go to edit, duplicate, and we'll bring it underneath here and we'll make the font even smaller. And we'll go ahead and type out our title. And this time we'll do a double line so you can put multiple lines of information if that's what you, what you wish to do. And we'll come here to the leading and we can just adjust that. Beautiful. And a cool technique here is you can add another line of text with just some random characters here. Uh, you don't have to do it, but it's just something interesting to do. And you know, vary eight, these settings here, specifically, I guess the tracking in this case, and also the size. And then when everything's done, you grab all three of your text layers, come here to the line tab, you go to window align, and you can left align everything. So everything will be on that left alignment there. So now we have our typography laid out and it has a structural hierarchy here. So the first title is the thickest and the largest. The second subtitles are a little bit smaller, but also has some of the similar themes of the first one. And then we have a third title block here, which is a little different. Uh, abstract, but this could be like an additional subtitle. Before we move on, as you know, creating motion graphics from scratch takes so much time and it's just challenging. To help you get work done in under a minute, we have produced over 10,000 templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. For example, in our Pulse Pack, you can preview these really cool templates and then apply them to your project. From there, you can change the settings to your needs and bam, another project complete. To see all of our templates and start saving time right now, be sure to check our links below. All right, so this thing we need to talk about is having a way to add detail to your overall work. So here we just have some simple shapes animating in here. You can do pretty much whatever you want, but we're gonna use circles for this. Uh, but think about how you can use other shapes uh, for the same exact technique. So what we'll do is come here, grab the ellipse tool, and we'll just draw out a perfect circle. Hold down shift to do that. And you can come here to the line tab, make sure it's all completely centered. And you'll notice the anchor points are usually never in the center. So all you do is control double click the pan behind tool and the anchor point then should be in the center. So then what we can do is just go to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this ball or whatever, click okay. We'll go back into that composition, 
and we'll come here to effect generate and we'll grab a gradient ramp and we'll bring these two anchor points to the top and bottom of the circle so we can have maximum contrast and we'll come here to start a color and we'll make this white and we'll come here to end of color and we'll select like a nice middle light gray here or something like that and we can just adjust these anchor points to create a very soft and subtle gradient because back in our main composition that's going to look very nice when it's all said and done so then we can also go to effect perspective and we can add a drop shadow to this and this is because we want this to stand out on our white portion of our background so we'll set our opacity to 15 percent the distance to 40 and the softness to 85. and then we'll come here to begin of our timeline hit s on keyboard for scale we'll add a keyframe for it move it forward in time maybe by a second set down to zero percent Select both keyframes, F9, go to the graph editor, and go ahead and variate that animation by dragging in the handles here. So nice. So back in our main composition, we're gonna have this ball animated. So then we'll grab the ball here, hit P on keyboard for position, Alt click the stopwatch, and we're gonna type in wiggle, open parenthesis 0.4 comma 200, and this is gonna add some random animation uh, to this ball. And then all we need to do here is take this layer, duplicate it, and move it around our composition creating a bunch of different variations of this shape. I went ahead and created a handful of duplicates. I also adjusted the scales of these randomly. Uh, and then all thing we need to do here is just offset them in time so they come in at different points in our work. So by offsetting our layers, we're gonna be able to fill up our composition with some exciting detail relatively pretty fast. So our work is coming together. The next technique I wanna talk about is subtle typography animation. You don't need to overdo it but we need to get an in animation on our typography. So we'll do something very simple that will apply to every single layer. We'll simply open up our very first title layer, which is motion. We'll come here to animate and we'll add a position. And all we're gonna do is come here to the Y position and bring this down. That's it. And then we'll open up range selector one, come here to begin of our layer, add a keyframe for start, go to, to one second and set this up to 100%. And we'll go ahead and hit F9, do the same graph editor animation. So simply our title will just position up. Now we have a couple things I wanna do here. First things first, I wanna open up our motion layer, copy animator one and paste it to the other two layers. So they'll all have that animation. Then the next thing I wanna do is grab the rectangle tool here at the top. And I'm just gonna draw a box around our very first title. Bring that shape layer right above that first title. Go ahead and set the track mat of the title to alpha mat. This way it'll only be revealed on when it's inside of that box, so it'll appear as a cut animation. So now we'll do the same exact thing for the next two titles, we'll just draw a box around those titles. So by creating those shapes and sending them to alpha mat, we can reveal each of these layers on individually. You can offset them in your timeline to come out at different times. Um, so you can create a really simple but effective uh, title animation. And we also added another title here on the right that might not be necessary for your project, but by adding a title that is opposing to the color palette of your main set of titles it's going to help create balance in your work um, and ultimately create a more appealing composition so the final technique i want to talk about to really take our work to the next level is adding just a few creative elements to this so first of all let's come here to layer new adjustment layer and go to effect noise and grain and just add a little bit of noise to this you don't have to do this but we'll set this up to 12 percent uncheck use color noise another thing we could do is come here to effect time and grab posterize time and set this down to 12 and this will make our animation seem a little bit more jumpy and glitchy and not so smooth this is a new effect that i like using to make our animations not as smooth it's up to you if you wish to use posterize time uh, it's just cool to have a few effects in your toolkit to choose from then what i want to do is select all of our layers go to layer pre-compose and call it all and i'm going to grab this layer hit p on keyboard for position all could stopwatch i'm going to type in wiggle open parenthesis 0.5 comma 100 and this will create like a little bit of natural camera shake to it, or it's not really natural, but it's just there to have it. Uh, but then you're gonna get some of these edges here. So to fix this, we'll go to effect, uh, stylize, and we'll grab motion tile, and we'll expand the output width and the height, and then just check on mirror edges. So by adding these last few second creative effects, it helps create more character in our work, and it's just up to you if you wish to use these uh, within your creative toolkit. And just like any tutorial, always be thinking about how you can use what you learn from these videos and apply it within your own work. There's so many different ways you can take these techniques and implement it into your After Effects projects. Also, it can be translated over to some Premiere projects or graphic design. It doesn't really matter. A lot of cool techniques in this one. So, hope you enjoyed this video and always 
be creating.